Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I am different from Sheikh Hani. I'll keep repeating till you get it right. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. Um, I know you've been sitting for a while, and when you sit for a while, you get a bit tired and lethargic, and you get a bit lazy and sleepy. So I think we need to just uh, re-energize the, uh, the auditorium. Can everyone just stand up for me again? I'm sorry for doing this to you. Uh, so what we are going to do, inshallah, that brother can say takbir again, but this time for each takbir you do three fist pumps, right? And you go Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You ready? No, no, Habibi, I, I, I think I'm going to take over this operation. So I'm going to say takbir, and then you guys say Allahu Akbar, but three times, nice and strong. Takbir. Once more, three times, remember. Takbir. MashaAllah. Please take a seat, ladies and gents. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah al-Azim al-Khabir al-Muta'ali. الحمد لله الذي لا تحجبه ظلمات الليالي الحمد لله الذي أرسل جبال العوالي سبحانه من إله عظيم يغفر الذنوب ولا يبالي لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله My beloved brother and most respected elders, mothers and sisters Yesterday I put it to you that if you let your lives be touched by the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you will reach the pinnacle of human achievement I want to say that again if you let your lives be touched by the life of the Prophet you will reach the pinnacles of human achievement and I cited certain examples from the near and dear of the Prophet his immediate family who reached amazing maqams and stations and status in the eyes of Allah and in the eyes of the creation because they allowed themselves to be molded and reformed and transformed by the character of the Prophet. Now you've been hearing for the last few minutes about key components of the character of the Rasul and just listening to it and contemplating and trying to take it in you can't help but reaffirm the verse of the Quran وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily, O Muhammad, thou art on a most sublime and exalted pinnacle of character. Now, to give you certain examples away from the family of the Prophet because you might say you know Khadija was family of course it would happen Aisha's family of course would I want to take it to the general Muslims and I don't I want to come to the empirical evidence if need be later time is running very fast but the gauge by which the companions wanted to be measured against was the gauge of Allah and the gauge of the Prophet. And this is what Allah Rabbul Izzah said about them when they allowed themselves to be transformed by the conduct of the Prophet and the teachings of the Quran. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Imagine this status, 
Allah Rabbul Izza is pleased with the believers as in the companions, those who swore allegiance to you under the tree. And understand, once Allah is pleased, he will not be displeased again. So Allah Rabbul Izza has certified their acceptance and their elevation and their status in the Quran, which will be recited till Qiyamah come as being on the highest level of human achievement. Allah is pleased with them. What else do you want? And then Allah Rabbul Izza says in another verse, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are, this verse is revealed with regards to the companions. So the companions explicitly and the ummah implicitly. You are the best of nations ever to have been brought out to humanity. Do you see status and achievement? That the creator says, you are the best things ever be, to have been brought out upon humanity. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we move, you know, you need to fathom the level at which the Sahaba reached and came to and acquired. Listen to this, just so that it's a gauge for you. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Tuba liman ra'ani. Glad tidings to those that laid eyes upon me, as in my companions, those who lived with me and learned from me and were molded by me. Glad tidings to those that have seen me. And such, such is their honor that Allah, that the Prophet wasallam says, Tuba liman ra'a man ra'ani. And glad tidings to those that see the ones that saw me. Let me explain. The Rasul says, عليه أفضل الصلاة وتم تسليم يغزو في آم من الناس A group of people will be in a campaign. There will be a confrontation. Two sides have met and no side is winning. It is deadlock, gridlock, uh, stuck, stalemate. And then the leader of the camp says, أَفِيكُمْ مَنْ رَأَى أَوْ صَاحَبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Is there someone in this gathering that has laid eyes on the Prophet or was a companion of the Prophet? A person will say, I saw the Prophet. I lived with the Prophet as in I was a companion of the Prophet. The Rasul says, Allah will grant victory to the whole campaign. Why? Because amidst you exists someone that laid eyes upon me. Do you see the status of the companions? And not only that, so the Rasul says, time will pass, another generation will come, and there will be another stalemate, a de deadlock, no one's winning. So then the person will say, Afikum man sahaba man sahaba Rasulullah. Is there someone here that has become the companion of those who were the companions of the Prophet? Like, is there someone whose life has been touched by the ones whose lives were touched by the Prophet of God? God, and a person will say, I am a tabi'i, I saw a companion. The Prophet says, Allah will grant victory to the whole campaign because simply amidst you exist someone who has seen someone that saw my Prophet. And I said, do, do you see level in the eyes of Allah and in the eyes of the Prophet? Here's another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. لا تصبوا أصحابي لا تصبوا أصحابي Don't ever insult my companions Don't ever insult my companions فوالذي فوالذي نفسي بيده By the one in whose hand is my life If you were to spend Listen, listen Muslims If you were to spend the mountain of Uhud in gold and my companion were to spend a handful of dates in gold his hand handful of dates will outdo your mountain of gold like if you were to give the mountain of Uhud in gold dig it up give it a sadaqa and a companion were to come and give a handful of dates his handful of dates will supersede your mountain of gold any day of the week and I've got news for you dear ones you will 
never give a mountain of golden charity. You, uh, you won't give a kilo of golden charity. You know, best you will do a few dollars here, a few there. But if it was a mountain you give, Allah says, if the companion of the Rasul were to give a handful of gold, a handful of dates and sadaqah, it is more preferred to me than your mountain. Do you see the status they have reached in the eyes of the Lord and in the eyes of the Rasul? So the question is, what were the competencies? You know, what are the characteristics, traits of these individuals that made them reach this status in the eyes of the Lord? So I will rush through it and I will try to honor this time and we'll see how it goes. The first characteristic is Iman. The companion's level of faith was at a level that ours is not. I, I will explain. So the Rasul used to talk to them as we talk to you and Allah Rabbul Izzah accept. But if the Rasul started to talk about Jahannam, they would cry like babies cry till their beards would soak wet and the water would drip under their feet. Do you know why a person cries so intensely when the utterance is a reality to them? So Jahannam would which is a part of the Akhirah, a part of belief, was reality to them. They used to fear it as you would fear proper fire in a volcano. If they talked about Jannah, here's a beautiful story. A Sahabi went on a campaign, was away for a long time, came back, and the Sunnah is you go to the, to the mosque and let your family know I am coming so that the wife can get situated, prepared, uh, you know, get in the right state of mind um, to receive the you know her husband so and the kids can get ready you know other psychologically it's an anti-climax if you come in everyone's busy no one's receiving you you've imagined the go you know a red carpet reception and nothing happens so the sunnah is go to the masjid let the family know you're coming so he did this there's anticipation at home he's coming so he came the kids ran hugged kissed he met the wife um, had food dinner and then the kids went to sleep and the wife goes to bed waiting for her husband to come to bed so he comes uh, and says listen can i just pray two rakah before coming to bed so she says yes he started allahu akbar and started reciting and stayed in salah till the adhan of fajr came zoned out came and she said subhanallah you went you campaigned you are away you met your kids you had food don't i have any right like don't i have a right of companionship so she he said yes you do but i started reciting the verses of jannah and i got lost in jannah and came out just now do you see jannah was a reality for them they looked at it as you look at real estate and because of that that level of iman you know angels is an abstract notion for you they saw them the hadith says you know the, the sahabi saw angels the sahabi is reciting the quran at night he notices lights come down from the heavens like from above him and his horse starts to neigh and go crazy so he gets worried and he stops the lights go up the horse becomes quiet so he starts again the lights come down the horse goes crazy so he finishes his salah and he tells the prophet the next day this is what happened the rasul said angels came down to listen to your recitation had you were to have continued people would have seen them in the morning do you see what is abstract to you was a reality for them and this level of iman is a requirement and with iman with iman you will conquer the greatest obstacles that a person without iman will never be able to come near i want to give certain examples dear ones listen to me carefully iman Iman builds resilience, it builds stamina, it gives courage, it gives hope, it allows you to overcome obstacles that one without faith will struggle with. So here are certain challenges in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Rasul is in Medina, Al-Munawwara. 
Uh, an army comes out against them, a surprise attack, news comes that, listen, in 10 days an army is approaching you. How big? 10,000 plus. How many fighting men inside Medina? 1,400. 1,400 will face off against 10,000 plus. It is easy to hear, but it is difficult to understand and feel. Visualize this. You're in an alley. Ten people come to surround you. That was the odds. That was the odds. And they haven't come to shake hands and offer coffee. They have come to annihilate the city. So what do you think? What do you think the psychology of this 1,500 would be like? So the Quran, and the Quran describes... إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرُ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظَّنُونَ Remember when your eyes grew wide and panic and your heart started to beat at your throats and they came to attack you from behind you and front of you and, and your hearts, do, do you understand me? Difficult times and but what is the morale? What was their status like? You would hear across the Muslim camp people singing, chanting this Allahumma la aisha illa aishu al akhira faghfir illahumma lil ansari wal muhajira. Oh Allah, there is no joy but the joy of akhira. Have mercy on the ansar and have mercy on the muhajirun. Do you see on the brink of annihilation? But what is the, the, the heart sahab? Ya Rabb, it is okay. There is no joy but the joy of akhira. And have mercy mercy on the Ansar and have mercy on the Muhajirun and they were forced to dig a trench you know I don't know if you I don't think you guys do meters here you guys do feet on yards and stuff I'll give it in meters because I'm from Australia so four meters deep five meters wide nine to eleven kilometers long fourteen hundred men have to dig it in ten days they were today you won't do it with machinery but they were digging night and day and on top of that hunger hunger so acute that the prophet has tied a stone or three stones on his stomach other people have tied stones on their bellies because there's no food can you imagine fear is there annihilation in front of them hunger to the brink of starvation for three days they haven't ate work that they have to finish weather bad who could survive but someone that has faith and you hear it in their utterance oh lord there is no joy but the joy of akhirah this is nothing we 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 are looking for that longing for that so with your faith you will conquer difficulties and the ashab had a faith that made them at a level which we haven't reached yet but which we aspire to reach the second one i have four minutes four minutes i will just i will end with this inshallah ta'ala the second competency of the ashab the second characteristic of the ashab was that they were what i call high order thinkers the ashab were thinkers the quran made them thinkers 23 years of teaching of the prophet forced them to become thinkers listen to the verses why don't you contemplate on the quran on order by allah to contemplate think allah rabbul izza says kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatih this book was revealed to you blessed so you can think and contemplate its verses find solutions for your lives from it don't make it an obstacle and a difficulty so i want to give and the ashab were intimate with the Quran. There's narrations from, from Uthman ibn Affan. He used to read the whole Quran in one night. But they read it with contemplation, with depth. And then they brought it into their lives. So just to show you that they were thinkers. You see in the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, a plague came. Uh, and people were dying like fleas. So uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab is busy, he's running a whole empire, so he sent a message to Amr ibn al-As and he said, Ya Amr, look into this matter, look into this plague, what's happening? So Amr says, I looked at it, 
as in I analyzed it, synthesized it, you know, uh, broke it up to see what, and I realized that this, this that the that the deaths happen in centers of population so that it is transferred from person to person so Amr gave a decree everyone separate from everyone else go into the mountains and into the deserts until further notice so everyone separated quarantined whoever had the contamination died and everyone else was left a few days later there's no more cases um, of the people dying from this plague if today the same thing were to happen the World Health Organization would struggle to find the solution but the students of Muhammad were thinkers. So today we have forgotten to think. We celebrate memorization, rote learning, uh, repeating and regurgitation. And we have forgot to reach the level of synthesis and analysis and creation of solutions for our world. And I hope and pray, and as I look at the thousands sitting before me here, that amidst you the youth will come again and be trained to become people with faith following the model of the prophet and ability to think and solve the problems that they will face tomorrow may the heavens guide and guard you فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتُ إِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَإِن تَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِن نَفْسِي وَشَيْطَانِ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Takbir, Takbir. Jazakallah khair to all our esteemed speakers today that is here with us. May Allah allow us to learn from them, benefit from, from them, and uh, give us benefit in their company, inshallah. So the next session, before, I, before we start the next one, which is a Bangla-only session, there's two main announcements. The first one is that there is a missing driver's license that we found, and uh, if anybody wants to retrieve that, that is theirs, then they can go to the inf informational booth on the first floor. The second announcement is that um, our next keynote session will be at 6.20 p.m. in about an hour and a half. Um, we have speakers uh, by the names of Imam Suhaib Webb, MashaAllah, Imam Uwar Sulaiman, Imam Zaid Shakir, Imam Siraj Wahaj, MashaAllah. So please do not miss that session. It's at 6.20 p.m. in this hall. So the next session for about the next hour or so will be Bangla only session. Um, it's going to be on the topic Borakalan Shafallo, which in, in English it means success in the hereafter. So uh, Jazakallah khair. Um, please uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>